Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, welcome to Standards by Starlight here at the Post Underground, Brookline's Community Jazz Haunt, where it's always 3 a.m. We are very pleased to see you all for numerous reasons, not least of which is that you're all very brave to come out and brave the uncertain elements in our lives right now. Um, but we are all committed to playing music, regardless of anything else. And um, it is Charlie Parker's centennial year. He was born in 1920. It is now 2020. And though you might not believe me when I say it, every Friday in the year 2020, we will be playing the music of Charlie Parker and talking about bits of his life, uh, usually on anniversaries. And it is a very sad anniversary today, and a doubly sad anniversary, and I will div uh, digress for a moment, but um, we did lose one of the great piano players of all time today, McCoy Tyner. And um, we would like to do something in his honor, but we haven't figured that out quite yet. Um, also on this day in, 19, uh, in 
1954, uh, 66 years ago, Charlie Parker's two-year-old daughter, Pri, died of what may have been undiagnosed cystic fibrosis. Um, she was always a, an ailing child, and um, Bird was out on the road when it happened, and it's a very tragic story, and I don't want to bring everybody down. Uh, so I will set the scene to some extent, but to counteract all of that, we're going to play some of Charlie Parker's most exuberant and uh, joyful music, um, starting with uh, one of his, well, literally his first composition, which is, was Yardbird Suite. Um, it actually had, it was a song with lyrics when he wrote it, still back in his Kansas City days. Um, it was performed at some point with um, a vocalist, and I keep meaning to figure out what the lyrics are, because Bird would have written those himself as a teenager. In any case, it is just a, a song that's overflowing with optimism and joy. This is Yardbird Sweet.
There was a bit of confusion with all the Gregs on stage. That's Greg Loafman on bass. <laughs> Greg Conroy on drum. <laughs> Where it's a battle between the Gregs and the Johns. That's John Mulroy on piano. And I'm John Purcell. So tie score two to two. And of course, that's Phil Grenadier on trumpet. <laughs> Charlie Parker was very creative uh, with wordplay. Um, you could always tell when he titled his own compositions, such as Cardboard or Clack to be Sedstein. And I wouldn't be surprised if he just made up his daughter's name. His daughter's name was Pre, P-R-E-E, -E, Pre Parker. And um, she was born in July of 1951. Um, Bird had settled down and was making a very sincere attempt to be a family man. Uh, he settled down with Chan Richardson his fourth wife, although technically it was a common law marriage, and Byrd neglected to divorce any of his previous three wives, but that didn't catch up with him. Um, uh, and uh, Pri, as I said, died this very date, uh, February 6th, March 6th, sorry, 1954. Um, and Byrd was a, really at a very low point. Uh, his he reached a pinnacle of achievement, artistry, and fame in around 1950, and he could not have known how uh, precipitous the, the fall would be. Um, and he was on hard, it was hard times already. He was out on the road with the uh, Stan Kenton Orchestra, which was a more grueling than glamorous um, assignment. It was a string of one-nighters, you know, the usual, the band bus, and um, even, touring through the South, which Bird really did, made every effort not to go to the Deep South, but, um, and I think he was the only African-American musician in the tour, I, I'm not sure about that, but, um, you know, peop, uh, other band people would have to go into the restaurant and bring him stuff because there would not, you know, there were no black people allowed in the restaurants down there. And so it was a miserable time. He was suffering from ulcers, severe ulcers, so he was in a lot of pain. Um, and uh, and then instead of getting to come home to New York at the end of the tour when his daughter was ill, um, his booking agency booked him a week at the Tiffany Club in Los Angeles. And that's a disaster of set, set proportions that we don't have time to go into. Um, but he was in Los Angeles when his daughter died, unfortunately. Um, and uh, drinking to mask the pain of his ulcers and prescription codeine pills, and some say heroin. And it was not a jolly time, and things went down from there. All right, so. <laughs> uh, we're gonna play one of his greatest compositions. Charlie Parker really, by all accounts, felt that he was speaking through his saxophone. I mean, literally telling stories, and his early bandmates, they would know what he was talking about, certain phrases he could communicate his thoughts, and they would try and do that. So, um, you know, uh, he always succeeded in telling a story, and that's how Lester Young put it, that you should tell a story, and Charlie Parker was very much the same opinion. So this next tune, which he did name himself, is Quasimodo, not Quasimodo, I thought it was a typo, but it's come to light that that was in fact what he, he wanted, spelled M-A-D-O, Quasimodo, Quasimodo. Um, it's based on Embraceable You. Might give you a little taste of Embraceable You first, and then we'll do Quasimodo. Um, see if you can figure out what Bird was talking about with this this song. It's it's like a long and interesting conversation about some things that can only be expressed through music. Thank you. 
worked up those chord changes and wrote this. Complex, joyful, and interesting.
Thank you very much. Quasimodo. Um, I don't know, but I think that I'd like to play a song that I hope is not too um, elegiac, if that's the word I'm looking for. But in, uh, I believe it was the first recording that McCoy Tyner, it was a very early, uh, early number in the, uh, the famous quartet with John Coltrane, John Coltrane McCoy Tyner, Jimmy Garrison, and Colvin Jones. It's called Equinox. Uh, it's actually in C sharp minor. I would prefer if it were in C minor. I don't see that there's any reason that I can't just decide to change key. Um, but before we do that, we have a, an epic pizza hero who will go down in pizza hero song and legend. I don't know how much he wants to be singled out, but it's Ed Musman has provided the 930 pizzas. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. This is Equinox. I believe uh, John Coltrane, because he was born on the autumnal equinox, probably chose the title for that reason.
That's from McCoy Tyner. McCoy Tyner, who died today or yes, just this very day, this very day, today. Um, let's see. Let's find a nice, happy Charlie Parker Blooms to play. I think that would be Bigfoot. Bird named it Bigfoot. Um, he had another tune called Big Noise, and somehow they were connected. Bigfoot and Big Noise. Um, it was recorded for the Dial label, and Ross Russell, the owner of Dial Records, fancied himself a uh, maker-up of titles, and he would even give different names to different takes of the same song, which created great deals of confusion over what any song was called. This song is sometimes called Air Conditioning. I think it's sometimes called Drifting on a Reed. But Bird called it Bigfoot.
That's how it feels to me. Thank you, everybody. Some people have been here quite a long time. Um, there will be more music. We have some exciting guests worth sticking around for. Um, but we will take one of our epic breaks after this next number. Um, we're trying to shorten them. I'll see what I can do. It's my fault entirely. We'll be back at 3 a.m. on the dot, though. You can find out. But this is a great, great band. I'm so, boy get to play with these guys all the time. It's heaven. That's John Mulroy on piano. The great Southpaw, in case you didn't notice, he's playing left-handed. It's a mirror image of every bass player you've ever seen. That's Greg Loafman. Always. Pure excitement when he's here on the bandstand at the Post Underground. That's Phil Grenadier on the trumpet. <laughs> and the heartbeat of the band, uh, who's with us every second of every moment of every bar, it's Greg Conroy on the trumpet. <laughs> I am John Pistol, and thank you very much for coming. Um, I do have to kind of do an NPR thing and just keep telling you about the post box. But the point of all this music and food is really to create a gathering space for the Brookline community. And thanks to the very intrepid souls who have come out tonight, meaning you. And it's all about this room full of people. And it wouldn't happen at all if it weren't for uh, Alman Hendrickson of the American Legion. So he's not here to give me he took upon it himself to open this wonderful basement space to the Brooklyn community, and this is what he wanted to see. So, um, we'll play one of Bird's happiest little tunes. I think he wrote this one. Um, it was recorded in one take for Savoy Records. Uh, he did not name this one. Teddy Reed, the recording engineer, named all the Savoy numbers that Bird didn't. And this one he named Steeplechase. Or is it Mary Go Round? Uh-oh. <laughs>
Snacks. Stick around if you can. We will be back with more great music. Thank you. Woo!